Hey everyone, if you're passionate about improving and leveling up your gameplay, I've been offering coaching classes for 5 days a week for quite some time, and just seen firsthand how much my students have been improving across all different elo brackets. How it works is you'll come to a class with a VOD you'd like reviewed, and I'm going to help you with your early game, your mid game, or anything you feel like needs improving. And if you're unsure, then I'm going to steer you in the right direction by setting clear learning objectives. Link's going to be in the description, I hope to see you there, but if not, then enjoy the video. How's it going everyone? Today we're going to be making a top lane tier list showcasing the best and worst champions to play for new players. And not just players that are new to the game, but also players that are new to top lane or players that have been stuck in a lower elo bracket for a significant amount of time. I'm going to be going through and explaining the reasoning behind the best and worst champions for you all to play. Now my criteria for ranking these champions, the two main points are going to be ease of execution, because if you're new to the game or in a bracket below platinum, ease of execution is going to be very valuable for you. Also learning fundamental skills is going to be the main two. So what I mean by that is a champion that when you play it's going to teach you skills that's going to really help you learn top lane as a role league of legends in general and the skills will transition onto different champions now the final two points for my criteria these aren't going to be as valuable i'll make a little pie chart meta stability and the reason this is important is because i don't want to recommend a champion for you to play where they're so strong in certain seasons depending on the meta that they get banned a lot or they're so weak in certain seasons that they feel terrible to play and the final one is just carry potential. When you're learning the game and playing in low elo brackets, carry potential it makes the game more fun, it gives you more agency in the game, and the more agency that you have, the more options you have to learn, because if you're losing these games on really high agency champions, then there's probably a lot more you could be doing differently, where maybe you go 2-0 on, let's say, a champion like Scion, a full tank champion, you're probably not going to have as much agency as if you did the same thing on a carry champ, so these are going to be the main criterias, and yeah, let's not waste any time, let's get started. So I'm going to be timestamping all our champions down below and we're going to be kicking things off with Aatrox. So I'm going to be putting the Trox into B tier. He is quite good in basically every meta and he does have good carry potential. But his ease of execution, he's quite hard to get a lot of value out of. And as for transferable skills, he is not the worst, I'd say, for learning the role compared to more niche champions. But he's quite hard to learn, quite hard to master, and he's really weak at specific points, really strong at other points. You need to really push the pace of the game. And not only do the games go longer in lower elo brackets, but also being that bus driver, you know, making plays, being really proactive, is something that comes with time. It's pretty hard for a newer player to, to be able to do that. So I'd say he's more of a B tier champ. He's quite fun to play, so if you love playing him, go hard. He's an, I'm not going to put him in the avoid tier but he is one of the harder champions to learn the game on and as for Akali I'm going to be putting it straight into the avoid tier so you're going to be seeing a similar theme for champions I put in avoid tier either their ease of execution is so low they're so hard to execute or they are just really niche so Akali even in all elo brackets I would say she is a niche counterpick champion she does see a bit more play in Korea as a blind pick from really good Akali players but generally this is not a champion that you can just pick and top whenever you want. She's a niche counter pick, and she's really hard to execute, really bad in certain metas, really OP in certain metas, so definitely a champion to avoid as a main champ. Now, as for Akshan, pretty similar reasoning. He is really good in certain situations, certain matchups, has some really hard ones, really hard to execute, definitely a champion to stay away from. Moving on to Aurora, similar reasoning. I'll say here's a little bit different, actually. Her kit is so overloaded, her ulti is so overpowered, that I don't see this champion just being pretty good in most meta. So like Aatrox, he does have some metas where he's OP a little bit, or a little bit weak, but he's always playable. He's always a decent champion, you'll always do your job, but Aurora with her ulti, it's just such a powerful spell, and her lane phase right now is so OP. I can't really see, unless they rework a bunch of spells, how they're going to balance this champ. It's either going to be too OP, or the numbers are going to be so low that she's going to be quite crap. So definitely a champ to stay away from as a learning the role champ. And as for Camille, I'm going to be putting her into B tier as well. Ease of execution, not the easiest champ at all. Quite good in every single meta. Really fun, lots of good carry potential. But learning skills, it's really good, I would say, to be honest, to learn skills on this champ that translate to others. Because if you, for example, rush into your spells, if you play too aggressive at the wrong times, you know, eating onto your, your opponent when you don't know a jungler or stuff like that, you're going to learn the hard way very clearly on this champion. But because the ease of execution is so low, I'm going to be putting her into B tier, but pretty high B tier, pretty close to A. The reason why she doesn't jump up into A is because there are some metas where she is quite hard to play. One a few years back, one at the start of the year as well, before she got her buff. So I'm going to be putting her into B tier for now because of lack of meta stability and also that ease of execution not being too high. 
Now, as for Cassiopeia, I'm going to be putting her into the Avoid tier. She's pretty much only a champion that you can play if you are a hard one tree, or if you're a mid laner getting auto-filled into top, and she's extremely hard to play. She's a really hard champ to get a lot of value out of, and she's one of the only playable top lane mages, so even if you do get to that level, these skills aren't really transferable to top lane or to other champions, so you're pretty much going to be gated into being a Cassio one trick. And if that's something you love, I'm not going to stop. This tier list is not going to stop you, of course, so it's not really the, the video for you but i'd say this champion is definitely one to stay away from if you're learning the game and as for Cho'Gath, I'll be putting him into B tier. He's not my favorite. He's going to be putting him pretty low in B because he's so weak in the early game. You can't really learn transferable skills like pushing your advantage, playing aggressive early game, you know, abusing level two, stuff like that on this champ. Most champs will just run you down level one. You're really vulnerable to gank. So you could learn that skill by force, I guess, if, if you're going to die, if you don't. But carry potential is low. There are some meters where he's useless, like the current one. So I'd definitely stay away from him in general. But if you love playing tanks, you like being that meatball, then he is a champion that is definitely viable because you can learn playing around your cooldowns, skill shot accuracy, surviving ganks, skills like that are definitely ones you're going to have to learn by force on this champ. And as for Darius, I'm going to be putting him into A tier. Really low on A tier, close to demoting him into B. The reason I'll put him in A is because although he's not the easiest champ to execute, it's not going to be as hard as some of these other ones. And also, he's pretty good in most metas. This is probably the worst meta for him in a while. With a bunch of ranged champs and strong overleveled ranged junglers running around. But he still has a lot of value. Still a really good champion. So he's never going to be really a terrible pick. He's got good carry potential. So the only thing really lacking on him is that ease of execution. And as for learning fundamental skills, I'd say he's pretty up there. Where you need to learn wave control on this champion and that's going to help you no matter what champion you play in the entire game so he's a great champion for learning i would say but because he is relatively on the harder side uh, he's not going to be my first choice pretty low in a tier but in a tier nonetheless now as for dr Mono, i'm going to be putting him into b tier if this was a low elo tier list in terms of how good the champion is in low elo he would be a bit higher but this is more so based around learning the game and getting better as a player so i'm going to be putting him into b tier he is so weak in lane you're basically waiting until Warmogs before you get value and he's a champion that's really good in certain metas like the one before when Warmogs was OP and really terrible in a lot of metas so definitely a champion that's not going to be too high the ease of execution is there he's very easy to play but I'm not a big fan of champions that have very very little agency in your laning phase and that's what he is a lot of the time if you're versed Mundo, they're sitting back they're chucking Qs and they're waiting for you to do something dumb or for them to hit their item spike which is around 11-12 minutes so not a big fan of him for learning the game on and as for Fiora I'll be putting her to avoid the ease of execution she's one of the hardest tops in the game so that's going to make it really hard for me to ever even promote her away from avoid and also meta stability she's pretty good I'd say in most metas as a top laner She's just a really strong solo queue champion, but learning the game is going to be extremely difficult on this champ, so the ease of execution is just going to far outweigh all the other criteria for this champ. And as for Gangplank, very similar reasoning. Another one of the hardest top laners in the game to play. You have to have thousands of games on this champ in modern day GP. There are some metas where he's just so OP. You can just go grasp and queue people down and be chilling, even if you're not the best at barrels. But that hasn't happened for a long time. Riders kept him in a state like this for a while. They probably don't want him to be OP because he is quite oppressive. Strong laner, champ that scales insanely well. So when he is overpowered, it's quite hard to play against, but he's just so hard to execute. He's so bad in certain metas. So definitely a champion to stay away from for learning the game on. For our next champion with Garen, and Garen is without a doubt my number one recommendation for any player trying to learn the game or climb out of lower elo bracket. He's such a great champion, he has good carry potential, pretty good in every single meta, really good ease of execution, one of the easier top laners in the game, and you can get a lot of value on this champion if you use your abilities well, and the learning. So learning the game on this champion is going to be one of the best, because he's not a champion like Mundo where you just sit back and do nothing in lane, and he's not a champ like Fiora or Riven, where you have to get this big early lead, and they're really hard mechanically. He's a champion where you do have these options, and a lot of matchups, a lot of agency, to take these big trades, get abuse your E Conqueror, get level 2 first, get level 3, play around certain item spikes really well, like Berserker Grease or Stridebreaker, really clear mid-game identity. So learning the game on this champion, especially because of how easy his kit is to use, is so good. And the kit's not so easy to use in the sense where there's nothing that you can do better on it after 5 or 10 games. Your W usage, holding Q, you know, auto resetting well, there are a lot of skills that you do need to learn on this champion, but in terms of the mechanical execution, it's relatively 
relatively straightforward. It's more so about learning how to use these spells with intention. So such a great champion. I'm going to rename this section actually and call him the king because I don't really see a champion that can match him in terms of all the criteria we're setting today. My number one recommendation by far. Moving on to Nar, and Nar's going to be finding himself in the Avoid tier as well. He is so hard to execute, so definitely doesn't have that ease that we're looking for. And his kit is one of the more unique ones in the game, so the skills aren't really that transferable on him. And the biggest reason, well one of the biggest reasons, is he's pretty gated by pro play, where he can never be that good of a solo queue champ, he can't be that stable in the meta, because he's just so strong as a pro play champ, that if they made him good in solo queue he'd be too weak in pro. So he's not really got that meta stability, really hard to execute, and not that many transferable skills compared to the rest of the other champions. And as for Gragas, I'm close to putting him in B tier, but I will be putting him into a void. Now, he is a champion that's easy to play, really hard to master. So he does have that, it's hard to say he has hard ex ease of execution because he's so easy to play at a base level, but I'm not a fan of him in terms of learning top lane on because he just has too many get out of jail free cards where you have infinite sustain with your passive once you build a couple mana items like a tear or catalyst if you're doing the rower build. You have too much disengage, wave clear, sustain. It's kind of just like a free pass for not needing to learn lane. So I'm not a big fan of it for a new player trying to learn the game as you'll pick up a lot of bad habits and unless you're a hard one trick on the champion, it's not going to pay off at all because he takes so many games to get to a super high level on. And as for Gwen, I'll be putting Gwen into B tier actually. She's not the easiest champ to play, but not so hard that I'd put her straight into a Void tier as like a Fiora. And her mid game and her team fighting is very clear. They're very easy to get a lot of value out of Gwen, I'd say, in terms of how you play your mid game and your team fights. You have really good carry potential. There are some metas where she struggled, so her meta stability is not the highest, but she is a champion with good carry potential. You can definitely win your matchups if you play her well, and she's just very simple to play out of lane, so a pretty good champion to learn a lot of different fundamentals on, but because you need to have really high matchup mastery on her, and there are some games that she's quite hard to play in, she's pretty much one of the goaded counter pick champions for top, but you can blind pick her if you love the champ. There are some high challenger players in Korea that just pick win, so definitely not a champion to stay away from but one of the harder ones I would say to learn the game on compared to the rest of the cast we're going to be putting here shortly. And as for Alawi, I'm going to be putting her into A tier. She's quite good ease of execution. She's relatively simple to play. I'd say her levels 1 to 5 is the harder part where a lot of champions like Darius or Sid or Jax have a lot of room to shit on you in early points. But you can also win a lot of those matchups too if you abuse your W and Grasp, if you play near the wall with your tentacle. So there is room for you to grow and learn how to play your matchups. But once you're level 6, if you're not behind, most matchups are relatively easy where you fish for ease. If they engage on you, ult their head off. Pretty hard to mess that up. So good ease of execution. The mid game's very clear pressure side lane as much as you can so relatively easy in terms of from the starting point to the end compared to a lot of other champions carry potential is pretty good not the highest but not too low and meta stability she's a niche kind of champion that mainly one tricks play so she's relatively similar power every season there are of course some metas where she's quite oppressive to play against especially the iceborne variant of her but generally she's a champion that's not too strong or too weak. So a champion that you can normally get consistent value out of. The one thing that makes me hesitant to put her into A tier is the transferable skills. But because you have a lot of room to play out your matchup well and push yourself 1 to 5, it is quite good. Even though after level 5 there's a lot of cheat codes where just push them under tail, fish for ease if they engage on your ulti. Once you get to that point, it is quite easy, but getting 1 to 5, even gaining leads or getting solo kills in some matchups is a skill you're going to have to learn, surviving ganks as well. So definitely not a champion that I'd stay away from. I'll be keeping her into 8 tier. Now, as for Irelia, I'm going to be putting her straight into the avoid tier, and the biggest reason by far, her ease of execution. She's so hard to get a lot of value out of. You need thousands of games on this champion to, be, to get really good at her and also her meta stability. This is a champion where your laning phase is so powerful that in the meta she's either broken and going to be banned a lot, or she's just so terrible, like modern day Irelia is really hard to play unless you're just a hard Korean Irelia one tree. You're probably not going to get much value from this champ, definitely a champ to stay away from. And as for Jax, I'll be putting him into B tier, I'm close to putting him into A. The reason I'm not is because he takes a lot of games in the sense where you need to know your matchups. His kit is not the most simple to use, I would say. The spells themselves, like a point click jump, stun, they're not hard spells, but getting a lot of value out of them definitely is. You need to know when to hold your E, hold your Q, when to use them together. There are so many little tricks you need to know. 
on Jax, and a lot of them are very matchup specific. This is one of the champions I'd say in top lane, where matchup knowledge matters the most, where on champs like Darius and Olaf and Maud, there are a lot of common patterns you can follow to do well in most of your matchups. But on a champion like Jax, you need to be very specific on certain matchups. The way you verse Jace or Kennen, even though they're both ranged counterpicks, are very different the way you verse a melee like Sid compared to a melee like Fiora. A lot of different ways you need to use your spells. So definitely a champion that's not the best to learn the game on as you need to develop so much matchup knowledge and have more of a problem solving mentality where in my experience that hasn't really come until later on after a couple years of playing or high low brackets. So I'd say not the best champion to learn the game on. But because his kit's not the most complicated kit, and he's got great carry potential, always good in most metas, I'll be keeping him on the list as a B tier, high B tier uh, at best, I'd say. Now, as for Jace, I'm going to be putting him into the Avoid tier. He's really hard to execute. He doesn't really have that many transferable skills. He's one of the more unique top laners in the game, where he's pretty much the only one that's ranged in melee, and the way you play in the mid game, extremely different to most. It's pretty rare that you have a top laner that can do well into long range champs like Zaya and Hui, and Jace is definitely one of them, but he's so hard to execute, and definitely a champion that's not good to learn the game on. Now, as for Cassante, I'll be putting him into a void as well. He has pretty low carry potential and lower elo brackets, and he's really hard to execute. He's more of one of those easy to play, hard to master champions, and I would say in terms of learning skills onto him, it's not the best. His 1 to 5 is quite weak. You're mainly playing to scoop people under tower at 6 as well, to cheese more solo kills, where it's not really a transferable skill. He's one of the only champs that can do that, so not the best champion to learn top lane on for sure. Kale, I'm close to putting her in a void. I'm not a big fan of her as a champion because learning the game on her is not that good in my opinion because she's so weak early game, but I'll put her in B tier. I'll say her carry potential is quite high because those lower elo games go quite long and learning how to play around your spikes, stabilize early, stay high HP, stay high mana, play around jungle, get level six with tier two boots. That is a skill that can apply to a, a lot of champions who aren't that strong early. Even though she's weaker than most champs early, there are still champs that need to play around certain spikes and she's definitely one of them. Carry potential is high. She's always a champion that's decent and low elo. Right now she's in one of her weaker states, but in general I'll put her as a B tier champ. Moving on to Karma, and I'll be putting her straight into a Void tier. Enchanted tops are definitely champs to stay away from, learning the game on, and Karma is no exception. As for Kennen, I'll be putting him in a Void as well. Really hard to execute. I'm, in general, you can probably see a pattern, not a fan of learning top lane on range champs. Most of the good top lane champs that are good year after year are merely beefy bruises. That's kind of the identity of top lane. And if you love playing range tops, that's fine, but Kennen is not one of them that I'd recommend to learn the game on. He's really hard to get a lot of value out of. He does have some decent carry potential, but not as much as a champion, like a Camille or a Jax or a Darius or a Garen, where you can just get fed and kind of run around fighting and get stuck in. You have to be very specific, picking your moments quite well, and it's just kind of one of the harder champs to learn the game on, I would say. So a champion I'd stay away from. And as for Clint, I'll be putting him into B tier. He is quite strong at certain points in the lane. You're going to have to learn your matchups on him a lot. But he is quite easy to execute. You can just hard engage with your ulti. And if you get good at your champion and know how to play around your passive, you will get some value out of him. Pretty good carry potential. He is good in certain metas and quite bad in others, but never to the point where he's a pick ban or he's completely useless. So he's not the worst champion by any means to learn the game on. Moving on to Malphite. And Malphite I'll put into A tier. His ease of execution, one of the easiest in the entire game. He's a champion that's good every single year in top lane. He's good in certain situations, so he's not a champion that I'd say main. Don't be a most played Malphite guy, but he's a really good champ to have in your pool. He's really good in certain situations. You can practice being proactive and being forceful, looking for proactive engages and being more of a leader in the game. As you're the one with that clear go button, this is when we're fighting. If you don't use it, this is when we're not fighting. So he does teach a lot of good skills to learn because even if you play a champion that doesn't have a good engage, a champ like Jax, you still need to know how to force and be really proactive and get stuff done. And Malphite is the easiest champion to execute this on. So he's quite good for learning that skill as like a training wheel version of that playstyle. So definitely keep him here. His early lane is kind of weak, but you're going to have to play around your spell as well. And the ease of execution is mainly the, the force that's carrying him here. Definitely a good champion to have in your champ pool, but not a champ to main. For our next champion, we're Mordekaiser, and finally I have a champion to put into S tier. Mordekaiser is a great champion. I'd say he's top 2 or top 3. I'll rearrange everything at the end. Top 2, top 3 champions to learn the game on. His kit's very simple. 
two skill shots, a shield, and a one out spell, 1v1 me bro. And his champion does have quite good carry potential. He's really good in most metas, especially in lower elo brackets. And just a great champion to play. You can learn your matchups. There are some things you can push yourself on. You're going to learn playing around cooldowns, abusing level ups, when to take short trades versus long trades. So a lot of great transferable skills that you can learn on this champion that will apply to a lot of them. So a great champion, definitely a 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10 recommendation from me. And as for Nasus, I'll be putting him straight into A tier. He has a great ease of execution, especially modern day Nasus with Phase Rush and three points E in certain matchups, really easy to execute. All of his spells are very clear. He has clear power points in the game where most of the time, chill to 6, just stack up your Q, poke them with E. At level 6, you can fight a lot of melee champs. You can either disengage or chase them down with Phase Rush. So pretty simple champ, mid game and team fighting, front to back team fights, split push in the mid game and group it up after making pressure, so really simple to execute, and pretty good for learning, I'd say not as good as others, because that 1 to 5 is so weak, where on a champ like Garen or Maud, there are a lot of matchups where you can abuse your strong level 1, get level 2 first, abuse that level up, you'll learn how to get level 1 wards down, because if you don't, and you're playing crazy level 1 or 2, you'll get ganked, so Nasus you won't really experience any of that, and learn the hard way through experience so definitely a champion where you won't learn much skills in terms of the one to five but the rest of the game really easy to execute and great to learn because you don't have to worry about your spells too much it's very easy how to use them and very clear for you how to use them so a great champion to learn the other aspects of the game on Moving on to my boy Olaf, and Olaf I'll be putting into A tier. I was considering B or A, I thought about this for a while, and I'm going to be putting him into A tier. I think he's a great champ to learn the game on. He's really strong, great carry potential, good every year. This is one of the weaker seasons for him, with Stridebreaker losing ability haste, and also your mana cost being really high, but he's still a great champion. There's not really many matchups that feel unplayable, compared to if you're playing Garen versus like a good Darius player for example, feels really hard. But Olaf, there's no real matchup like that that is so hard that you'd even need to ban it. So you can learn that, you can push yourself early, great transferable skills, abusing level 1, level 2, 3, getting level 1 wards. It's very clear what you want to be doing in team fights, running down people, and there are still some tricks that you need to know about him, like juggling your axes, playing on your E, and yeah, juggling axes and stuff like that is not a skill that will transfer to other champions, but he's a champion that's relatively easy to play. Your spells are very clear. There are some more tricks you need to know, like using W on low HP, auto resetting, things of that nature. So he's not the easiest champ by any means, but a great champ, great carry potential, good most metas, and he is going to teach you how to push yourself and gain advantages in the lane. Next up, we have Orn, and Orn, I was close to putting him into B tier, but I will put him into a void. And my reason for that, he is kind of easy to play, but hard to master. He has quite low carry potential, and the skills, they're not really the skills that I'd want a new player to learn. Where if you learn the game, I always feel it's best to learn how to carry and be really impactful in the game as a primary, and then learn secondary how to be a role player, you know, fill that mold, know when to get carried, things of that nature. Because if you only know how to play like that, how to be a more defensive, play for your team, peel for your backline, stuff like that, not only is your win rate going to be lower, especially in lower low brackets where your backline is probably going to make a lot of mistakes, but also you're not going to learn how to be that dominant carry threat, and you definitely want that option. So let's imagine you started playing Orn, as you learned, and you did quite well, because you played a lot of them with your boys and norms, and you got quite good at them. Maybe you get to gold too, maybe you get to platinum as Orn. You're going to get to a point where you need to know how to carry games. And I'm not saying you can't carry on this champion. Of course, a challenger Orn is going to run platinum or emerald games, but it's still a champion that has much lower carry potential compared to a lot of strong bruises or carry tops. And that's definitely a skill I'd want a new player to at least know how to do before moving on and learning tanks and being more of a defensive style for their team. Next up we have Pantheon, and I'm going to be putting Pantheon into B tier, I'm a little bit reluctant, I do want to put him into a void, but he is quite easy to play, he's pretty strong most metas, quite a good lane bully, and you can learn how to push yourself early in lane, it's going to teach you the hard way to get your wards down, because you're going to get ganked on him, pretty immobile champ, and you can play for a lot of kills, abuse level 2, abuse level 3, it's a lot of good skills that you will learn on this champion, kind of a another training wheels champ for abusing a strong one to three, but it's a champion where you have to push yourself. You need to be very proactive on this champion, making ulties communicating to your team in advance what your intention is. And that's a really hard skill for a new player to learn because there are so many more fundamental skills that they need to learn first. So definitely low on B tier in my opinion. 
Moving on to Poppy, and Poppy I'll put into B tier. I think she's quite a strong laner, so you can learn how to push yourself in lane a bit more because you have a lot of agency. But her kit is pretty unique, so it doesn't transfer that well onto other champions. But learning that short trade versus long trade mentality that you need to grow on Poppy is going to be a good skill that will transfer to a lot of different champions. So she's not bad for that. I'd say the ease of execution, she is quite easy to play. Hard to master, her kit's pretty straightforward, and she is a tank champion, even though you can go Sundered Sky, have a bit more carry potential, so her carry potential is not that high compared to other bruises, so I'm going to be putting her low onto B tier. Now, as for Quinn, I'll be putting her straight into a void. I think this champion's just not very good as a top laner, except for a specific counter pick and two melees that can't really do anything about it, and you're not really going to learn that much. Just shooting your opponent, and if they try and gauge on you, point click, kick them away. Not really going to teach you any good habits that you need to know. So not a great champion, I'd say, in general to play. Carry potential is not too bad, I would suppose. But some meta she is pretty weak. And also learning the game on her very, very low. So definitely a champ to avoid. Now Renekton, I'll be putting him to B tier. The reason he's not an A tier is because the Fury management is relatively hard to play around. Especially for a new player. His carry potential is not nothing of course but it's not the highest compared to some of these other champions i have above him and he's a champion that you really need to push the pace of the game on and i talked about it a little bit before on different champions but that is such a hard skill for a new player to learn where you need to be making proactive calls knowing the best place to be how to get to a fight before it begins that's a skill that you need to learn to get good at this champion but that is there's just so many bigger things that you need to learn in terms of team fighting laning really clear fundamental aspects wave controls things of that nature and you can learn them on renekton but i'd say it's not going to be as good as other champions so i'll put a middle of the pack maybe high end of b tier and Renga, I'll put him in a void. This is a champion that's very, very unique. There's no champion like him, and only a champion that's good for specific one tricks. Some metas he is really terrible, so definitely not a great champion to learn the game on, and really hard to play as well. Now, Riven. Riven's a tough one. I'll put you putting into a void, because the players that main Riven, they're not going to listen to me anyway, but this is kind of a champion that you don't really choose to play Riven. She chooses you. She is such a great champion to one trick, at the higher levels but if you're learning the game i wouldn't want you to be like oh riven looks fun and start her to learn the game on when learning team fighting laning trading on this extremely hard mechanical champion is going to be impossible because you have to learn all of her combos how to use her spells well things of that nature the champ master is going to come first on this champion and there are actually quite a lot of i'd say masters to low gm riven one tricks who aren't that good at league in general and that's going to sound weird to say because they're high rank but they're so good at their champion they're so good at their matchups, but their wave control, what to do in the mid game, their team fighting is all at a lower level than their bracket because the champ mastery carries them. So even though it's a great champion to be a one trick on, that's not the criteria for this video. She's not a great champion to learn the game on, but if it's the only champ you love playing and you feel yourself getting better at her, then of course you should commit because that means it's a champion that you really love playing and it's not a bad champion in the long run for you, but for learning the game especially, it's best to learn on other champions and then once you feel like you've got the fun fundamentals down then you can move on to a more advanced champ moving on to rumble and rumble will be putting it into the avoid category really hard to execute quite broken or quite weak depending on the meta and not really that many transferable skills compared to a lot of the other champions so really just not doing too well in our metrics now as for set he's going to be the opposite i'll be putting him straight into s tier i think this is a great champion to learn the game on he has a lot of agency in the early game you can play for a lot of kills you can you have a strong level one two and three you can abuse and even though it's kit simple there are some things you need to learn and to get a lot of value out of the spells matchup knowledge is important as well how to verse range champions you're gonna have to learn that by force if you play this champ things of that nature so really good champion to learn on because you have so much agency in a lot of your matchups and your ease of execution is really high his kit's very simple your job in the mid game and team fighting is very easy so a great champion all around for our criteria today now, as for Shin, I'll be putting him straight into B tier. I'd say his ulti is extremely unique, so the skill of using that well doesn't transfer over, but he has actually a pretty powerful early game, 1 to 3, that you can use quite well. Not as strong as a lot of other champions, of course, but he's not like a sit back and do nothing champion lane. You can learn how to push yourself more on this champion, and he's really simple to play. All of the spells are very straightforward. But in terms of learning the game on, it's not the highest, I'd say below middle of the pack, so very low on B tier as a champion. But because you can push yourself more and learn 
key laning abilities on this champion and the kit's easier to use i'll be keeping him into b tier instead of dropping him down into the dungeons of avoid and as for Singe, I'll be putting him in those dungeons, Avoid, because the proxy style you play on this champion is very unique. You can proxy on other champions, but it's a very hard skill to learn and not going to be a top priority for you. And this champion, his kit is very simple, so the ease of execution could be there, but the playstyle is not easy to execute. You're either going to be a liability or extremely impactful on this champion if you have a clear idea of what to do in the game, depending on the variables, and that's a really hard skill to master, and also a skill that doesn't transfer over to pretty much any other champion, so not one that I'd recommend. And Shivana. I'm not going to waste much time on it. You guys know how I feel by now. Hate this champion, keeping her in a void. Really terrible and lame. Bad transferable skills, not much you can do on her. And some metas she might be good with some cheese gimmicky build, but a champion that I strongly recommend you stay away from. And as for Saan, I'll be putting him into a void. But keep in mind, he's nowhere near as bad as the majority of champions in this avoid tier. But he's just barely not good enough to be put into B tier. The reason for that, even though he's relatively easy to play, I'd say his kit's not very difficult. The, cha the skills you'll learn on this champion aren't the skills that I'd want you to learn as a new player or a player trying to climb out of lower elo games. Where his carry potential is very low, his early lane is very low, uh, early lane power, so it's just not a champion that's great for learning and the way you mainly gain leads on sound is not in the form of solo kills, it's mainly around proxying and break blowing up tower in front of people and you know the boss special getting some good tempo defs, so not a good skill to learn on for other champions. If you have a good tempo def on Camille trying to proxy, of course it's going to be terrible, but Sion you can get away with it, especially if you use your passive well. So it's not a good champion in terms of skills that you'll learn that's going to apply to the majority of stable top lane champs, and carry potential being very low in the lower elo games. Now Skana, kind of similar, I'll put him in a void. I'd say this champion should be a jungle, I really don't want him to be a top laner, and the way you get kills on them in lane is kind of similar to Cassante. I'd say they're the only two. They can be buddies up here where you want to be scooping people into tower. So it's kind of cheesy in a way. You're not going to learn clearly how to get kills and bully trades and stuff like that. As you would on other champions, the early lane is so weak. So you don't really get to learn that part of the game either. And even though he's a pretty easy champion to play, I'd say because his skills are so low transferable and the meta stability is so poor, I'd say the way his kit is, he's either going to be a terrible top laner or broken. As we saw at split one this year to the current split, he went from busted to terrible. So definitely a champion I'd stay away from. Now as for Tom, I'm pretty close to putting TK into B, but I'm going to be putting him into a void. And my reasoning for that, you may be thinking he's pretty strong in lane, why can't I you know, learn how to lane on him? But his laning is kind of cheat code in a way, where you have so much sustain, he's like the ultimate meatball of not getting shit on in lane. But that's not a skill I'd want a new player or a low elo player to learn. I want you to learn how to gain leads, translate these leads, and be a reason why you can win games. But Tom's not really that. Of course you can carry games on any champion in the game, but his carry potential is way lower, there are some metas where he's terrible, and his lane phase is so gimmicky in a way that the skills aren't going to transfer over as well. Where I could be a little bit elitist here, but imagine a matchup like Olaf vs Darius, very skillful, playing around cooldowns, knowing your limits, knowing when to go in, where Tom is like, you can just beat them down and spit them under tower if they do something dumb, or queue them when they're not next to minions. It's not really a skill that transfers over as well into other champions as on a champion like Renekton, where of course there's no champion with the same kit as Renekton, but it's very clear playing around your cooldowns, knowing when to go in, knowing when to short trade or long trade, where Tarm is so like you can just absorb any poke and if they overforce onto you, you can hard beat them, but it's pretty hard for you to force an advantage on this champion and the carry pot uh, potential is also quite low on him as well. Next up we have Teemo and the Mo I'll be putting into A tier. I think he's one of the better ranged champions to learn the game on. Very easy to play. He has pretty good carry potential. There's not that many hard matchups in lower elo brackets. Champions like Rumble who are quite good into Teemo. You're not going to verse a good Rumble almost never. Well guaranteed never. So he's a great champion to play if you enjoy that playstyle. And the skills aren't as transferable if you want to pick up melees along the road. But if you love that range lane bully playstyle, you can go from Teemo and then when you get a bit better at the game, learn more fundamental skills into champs like Kennen or Aurora later on maybe. So he's not the worst champion for transferring skills, not as good as the ones above him. So I'm going to be putting him pretty low in the A tier, but A tier nonetheless. 
And Trundle, also going to be an A tier. He is a really simple champion, one of the easiest in the game. Very clear what you're going to do. Run downside, mute your teammates, and just blow up towers. Your mid game identity is very clear. Team fighting is very easy. The way you play your trades is pretty easy. So his ease of execution is hard carrying him here. He does have some meta stability. He was a lot stronger when Lethal Tempo was around, but he's never completely useless and never completely broken in the sense where you'd ever see him banned in high elo games. So he's a champion that you can always get value on. And if you love that split pushing playstyle, then he's probably one of the better champions to learn that on. Now, as for Trindamir, I'll be putting him into A tier as well. Pretty similar to Trundle, where really easy to play. It's really easy to know what your goal is in the game, split push towers. The reason I was close to putting him into B tier is because the modern day Trindamere is a little bit gimmicky in the sense where Ravenous Hydra with Grasp, you're just the sustain king and you don't really have to interact with your lane that much. But I don't want to be that biased by current day Trindamere. In the long run, this champion is relatively good to learn your limits on. Know when to short trade, know when to long trade, run them down, things like that. And because he's so easy to play and relatively good most medicine in solo queue, not a bad champion at all to learn the game on. Moving on to Udair, and Udair I'll be putting into a Void tier as well. He just doesn't have that carry potential or meta stability that I'm looking for, and he's a champion that's easy to play, hard to master. But as for the transferable skills, this is the biggest one for me. There's not that many. He's also a champion that you need to push the pace of the game on, be really proactive, proxy run to the jungle, be really involved in the game. Not a top priority, and also very difficult for newer players to do, so a champion I'd recommend staying away from. And as for Urgot, I'll be putting him into A tier. I think he's very easy to play. It's easy to know what your job is in the game. You can just front to back team fight, play side lane. You can be fine most of the time. And he has clear power spikes. Level one's quite good. Playing around your ulti as well. So he's a relatively simple champion that can get a lot of value. And he doesn't really have that many unplayable matchups to the point where you'll be suffering if you get counterpicked. Once you learn some of the harder ones, you're going to be fine. So definitely a great champion to learn the game on. Now, for Vayne, I'll be putting into a Void tier. Learning top lane on an AD carry champion is something I'd strongly advise against. Apart from this season, where we saw some Zeris and Corkies running around, there's not going to be any other AD carry tops, and you'll learn some bad habits and not really learn any of these good habits that I'm looking for. And Vladimir, the reasoning will be similar, but a different class. There's not that many mage top laners, so I'll be putting him into a Void as well. I don't think he's that weak of a champion, and you do have good carry potential, but meta stability is not great. He's quite weak or quite strong, depending on the meta. So he might get banned a lot if he's OP, and he might just be too weak to play if he's weak. And in terms of the transferable skills, I don't really like how weak he is 1-5 to five for learning the game. I prefer champs, as you can see, for most of them. Not all of them, but a lot of them have a lot of agency, 1-5, to five, that you can play for abusing your level 2 spike, level 3, getting down your vision so you don't get ganked level 3, stuff like that. So it's just not a great champion for that, where you mainly just sit back, take 100-0 trades. If you get poked, you sustain it back with your Q. Just not a great tool for learning, in my opinion. Now moving on to our three fairy champions down here, we'll start with Volibear, I'll be putting him into B tier. I think he's a champion that has quite a lot of agency in the early lane, you're quite strong, but the issue I have with him is quite hard to force advantages on him. He's a little bit of a meatball, where your passive makes it a bit tricky, you're just constantly pushing waves, if you trade onto somebody, your E and passive is going to annihilate the wave, so hard to freeze and punish in a lot of matchups, and just not a great champion to learn compared to the rest, but because you do have a lot of agency in the early lane, and you can play quite aggressive and win trades, he's not the worst, you can push yourself in laning phase, and he's very very simple, very easy to play, so I'll be keeping him in B tier for those reasons, and for Warwick, it's pretty close to being in B, but I will put him in a void. The reason for that is this champion is very gimmicky, where a barrier exhaust kind of cheesing people and abusing your strong level 1, not always barrier exhaust but barrier top, it's just kind of cheesy and not a transferable skill, where the big benefit to Warwick is people don't know how to play against it, so if you learn top lane through Warwick, you're pretty much just learning this champion, which is not, a, not ideal for me, I want you to become good at top lane, not good at this one specific champion with very little transferable skills. And for Wukong, I'll be putting him into B tier. I'd say high B, low A. I'll decide more at the end when I rearrange them. This one I'm really torn between. I'll put him halfway for now if you let me do it. And the reason for that, he's quite strong in lane. So you have a lot of room to play for kills, play for good trades, learn that short trade versus long trade mentality, things of that nature. He's very easy to play. Really easy to know what your job is in team fights, but you will need to practice holding spells, comboing well. So a lot of the skills you will learn on this champion is great. 
He's just not the best champ to land the game as a main because he has a lot of hard matchups. He's a pretty bad blind pick. So you will face some tricky matchups, even if you versus like a Malphite or a Mordekaiser. These are going to be hard to play against, even though those champions are quite easy to play for your opponent. So just not the best champion, I'd say, in terms of blind pick power. But in terms of learning, definitely high B, low A, because a lot of the skills you pick up on this champion will apply when you move on from him. Moving on to our win bros, and Yasuo, I have to put it straight into a Void tier. He's pretty much bottom fragging in all of our metrics, where he does have some carry potential, but without knockups on your team, it can be quite tricky and really hard to execute. The transferable skills aren't really there, and just in general, he's just a bad top laner. Really hard to pick if you versus any beefy bruiser, and you're not exceptionally good at this champion, you're probably going to get rolled, so a champ to stay away from. But as for his big bro, or little bro, not really sure, but Yone I'll be putting into B tier. I was reluctant to put him here, because he can be hard to master, but in terms of playing him to a decent level, it's not too bad. As long as you have a great short trading mentality and use your abuse your shield, Q3, clickback, stuff like that, and a lot of those skills are transferable onto other champions that love that short trade mentality, and knowing when to short trade, when to long trade is a great skill to learn. And even though he can be quite hard to play at the highest level, it's not too hard to get a decent amount of value off him because in team fights you can use your E and go in with your ulti after somebody else. And as long as you wait for somebody else to go in first, it's relatively straightforward. You can be greedy inside, eat camp, stuff like that. But yeah, really low on BT, I'd say, because he's not that easy. But he has really high carry potential, pretty good meta stability as a top laner. But he does have some tricky matchups, but not the worst champ at all. Really low on B tier, borderline avoid, but I'll keep him in here just because I'd say he's not as bad as everything else below him. Next up, we have Yorick, and Yorick I'll be putting it into A tier. I think his kit is very simple. It's very easy to know what you want to be doing in the game. In lane, chuck your E at somebody. If it misses, you're probably going to back out. And in mid game, just split push, just create as much pressure as possible. So really easy to execute his kit and his job in the game. And transferable skills, it does apply to a lot of other strong split pushing champions, but a little bit on easy mode. The only problem I have with him is that his early lane is quite weak, his 1 to 5, but that's also a skill in itself, playing around champions that come online later on and weathering that storm early game. And there's still some things you can do early game. You're not just going to sit back and do nothing and chuck ease. There are some times you can push yourself more in certain matchups. It's not the worst champion at all for learning early lane on, but definitely probably one of the weakest in uh, A tier here. So I'm going to be keeping him in low A, but that ease of execution, it just really carries him. And the skills in terms of getting your value in the game does transfer to a lot of champions that suit his playstyle. And for our final champion, we have Zac. And Zac I'll be putting into low B tier. I think he's pretty easy to play. His kit's pretty straightforward. There are a lot of tricks you can do with it, chaining your CC well, stuff like that. But not the hardest champ by any means. And decent carry potential. The skill I like that you'll learn on this champion is knowing when to force, be that guy that starts to fight and really dictate when a play happens or when it doesn't. That is a great skill to learn. But I would say it's not as transferable as other champions and the early lane is quite weak in terms of put, getting pushed and playing aggressive and abusing level up timers. But you can abuse your strong level 1. It's kind of like you poke them down level 1 while they're getting pushed and attack them on the, the bounce back or you try to freeze. And that skill does apply to other champions as well. So definitely not the worst champion. I'll be keeping him in low B tier. Alright everyone, that's it for now. I've rearranged all our champions from left to right in our first four categories in order of priority. I didn't rearrange the avoid category because you're all going to be avoiding that anyway. And if you do have some champions in mind that you think I should have put on this list, so let's say champion like Ryze or Bria, probably just avoid them. Any champion I didn't put on this list is for a specific reason. I did go through all of them. But if there are some champions that you disagree with me on, feel free to let me know in the comments. Or if you have any questions in general, I'll be happy to get back to you. And other than that, I'll see you guys next time.